The Soul Society, Waco Mundo, and the world of the living are at peace. But there is a looming threat. A threat far greater than Aizen and the Espada. A threat more terrifying than the divine Quincy Messiah and his occult-like fighting force. A threat that could spell the end for everyone and everything. To combat this threat, the Soul Society, Waco Mundo, and the world of the living must produce new combatants with extreme potential. There won't be time to run. There won't be time to hide. Everyone is going to have to reach their full power and potential if the good guys even stand a chance at winning this time. Hey guys, Sterling here, and welcome back to the channel, and as I stated, there's a force that threatens the Bleach universe that's going to make Yuha and Aizen seem minuscule, an ancient, truly evil, truly terrifying threat. Hell. More specifically, the occupants of hell. It's going to take all hands on deck this go around. So in today's video, this is the start of a new series where we look at certain characters in the story that have the potential to be extremely powerful. We then take those characters, hypothetically go through training them up, and then flesh out what their impact could be in the upcoming war against hell. Obviously, there's tons of new and old characters to choose from, and we're eventually going to go through every single one of them, but first on our list is two characters that I'm extremely excited to talk about, two characters that have the potential to be the strongest in the verse, or at least in that upper echelon of power, and that's none other than Ichigo's sisters, Yuzu and Karen Kurosaki. Now, some of you may be rolling your eyes, but these two are perfect candidates to train up for the upcoming Hell Arc. Now, these two did next to nothing in the story, I'm aware of that, but that doesn't change the fact that if exposed to the same sort of things Ichigo was exposed to, they would be absolute powerhouses. I mean, after all, their brother is one of the strongest beings in existence, their father is a captain-class Shinigami from a noble bloodline, and their mother was an extremely strong Quincy. Now, obviously, most of this is going to be hypothetical because we have no idea when we'll actually be able to explore a Hell Arc written by Kubo, but that's what us YouTubers are for. I thought it would be extremely fun to explore what the Hell Arc would be like, and I think it would be absolutely incredible to explore a story in which Yuzu and Karin played a big part in that upcoming arc. So let's dive right into this one, guys. Our hypothetical discussion story begins immediately where the last chapter left off. The Soul Society, for the first time in a long time, is on high alert. It has been confirmed hell is no longer closed shut. Not only that, but after confirming with Ichigo and the Shinigami on scene, the Soul Society has indeed been damning their comrades to hell, unknowingly. So unbeknownst to the Soul Society, they have been participating in a ritual for thousands of years that after a Captain Class Shinigami has perished, they do a ritual to contain his spiritual pressure. Well, they've been sending their essence, their spiritual, spiritual pressure to hell, and they haven't even realized it. So that's where our story begins, guys. Soul Society is on high alert. Everyone's pretty much on high alert because they're like, wow, hell is a thing and not only that but it's unleashed like we those creatures we just had to fight that was terrifying so yeah guys the scene has been set hell is about to launch their massive attack i'm sure and soul society the world of the living and waco mundo are going to have to prepare for that so that's where our story is going to start off Yuzu and Karin obviously have lived such a sheltered life, they've never had to be in danger. Ichigo or Ishin has always protected them from it. But this go around, they're not going to be able to hide, they're not going to be able to be protected, they're going to have to use their power to actually combat this brand new threat. So we didn't get to see much of what Yuzu and Karin were up to in the Bleach one-shot, but they are teenagers at this point and so they're probably doing normal teenager things i imagine karen is still probably spiritual uh, spiritually aware and can still see spirits i don't know about yuzu maybe she develops into it and starts being able to see spirits but for the most part they've grown up in peace times and they're normal teenaged girls i could even see them studying to be doctors in the future because not only is their dad a doctor but uriyu is now a doctor as well two 
people that they could possibly look up to. Obviously, we know they look up to Ishin, but maybe in this timeline, they know Uriyu very well, too, because of all the adventures that Ichigo has been on with Uriyu. Anyways, my point being is they're just normal teenage girls aspiring to make something of their lives. But now, with the gates of hell being open, their lives are going to change drastically. Obviously, after the events of Xyloparo making his appearance and claiming what he claimed about the gates of hell, everyone's going to know about it, including Ishin, even Uehara, everyone. So at this point, I think Ishin's going to be like very reluctant to obviously want to train his daughters up, but he's he's going to have to. He, he doesn't want, like if he's not there, if he's going to have to partake in a battle somewhere, these two are going to have to be able to defend themselves. Not only that, but they have a nephew to defend. So ultimately, I think they're going to be set down and told about the situation, and they're going to have a decision to make. Do I stand and fight? Do I train? Or do I set back and let Ichigo, my father, and everyone else protect me just like normal? I think both of them are going to choose to train. And that's where this what-if discussion story gets incredibly fun. Because first, let's address the elephant in the room. Do Yuzu and Karin have a hollow spirit inside them just like their brother Ichigo? The answer is no. Masaki only passed on the hollow white to her firstborn, and that was Ichigo. But that doesn't change the fact that Yuzu and Karin are still still have potential to be absolute powerhouses, like I mentioned. Because they are not only Shini, half Shinigami, but half Quincy as well. So they have access to all the Shinigami abilities and all the Quincy abilities as well. And they've always had this potential to be extremely strong. It's just that in the actual story, they never go through any actual danger to awaken these powers. Their brother Ichigo goes through so many battles and so many hardships, he almost gets a Zenkai boost after every battle. Now, if Yuzu and Karin were exposed to battles just like Ichigo and did the training with Uehara, then they would probably be just as strong as him, minus the hollow aspect of his powers. But guys, that's nothing to sneeze at. So obviously, we've got Yuzu and Karin, and they've been made aware of the situation that's going on in Hell, and they've made the decision to train. And now, like I said, guys, this is where it gets extremely fun, because we get to see who they would train with. Now, obviously, I think their dad's going to want to play a part in this, but I think Uehara will also play a part in it. Now, how it will look is that Uehara will take them down to his training center, his cave where they where Ichigo did his training and they would be exposed to the same type of training that Ichigo was exposed to but the only thing different is Ishin will be there and also Uriyu so like I mentioned earlier that Uriyu may have some sort of influence in their life I think he would since he's pretty much one of Ichigo's best friends and not only that but he's a doctor of the major clinic in their town. So this is a side note, but I could totally see Yuzu and Karin doing some, tor some sort of internship with Uriyu just to see how like a hospital would work. Anyways, the reason why Uriyu would be present in the underground training grounds is because he's a Quincy. So he could also teach Yuzu and Karin all the Quincy abilities that they're going to need to know for the upcoming battles and then obviously you'd have Ishin and Uehara there to train them up in all things Shinigami so you have an extremely potent mix there this is a complete side note, but if you think about it, guys, the Hokioku should have affected both Karin and Yuzu. Like, it affected everyone else around Ichigo and Rukia, or around Rukia at least. I don't know why it wouldn't have affected them writing, but anyways, can you imagine if the Hokioku would have helped them manifest their powers? Oh man, and we're going to talk about that towards the end of the video, what they could have been in the actual story. We're going to stay with the hypothetical for now, but that's just just a little side note there, guys. Can you imagine if the Hogyoku would have awakened their powers? Anyways, back into the actual discussion. So you've got Yuzu and Karn, and they're training in the underground basement. And guys, this training's going to have to be 
extremely fierce. Like, you, you're going to have Uahara and you're going to have Ishin there. Guys, these interactions would be incredible. Ishin would be like, take it easy on my girls. But at the same time, in the back of his head, he would know, like, this threat that's coming, like, this is the strongest threat ever. Not only are there ex-captains, the ex-head captain himself, down in hell, there's also all the people that have been sent to hell over the entire existence of the Bleach universe, they're down there too, and they're going to want to cause mayhem. So when the gates of hell are unleashed, like I said, Yuzu and Karin, they're going to have to be ready. Anyways, they're going to have to cover so much ground training-wise. They're going to be training with Uriyu, like I said. They're going to be training with Ishin. They're going to be training with Uehara. But like I said, this training's going to have to be extremely intense. Now, for the sake of this what if, we're going to to say that they do get the necessary training okay so whether you want to say like i like i said they do that at new Ohara's basement <laughs> basement or or if they do that maybe in the precipice world that would be even better because it would almost act as a hyperbolic time chamber but the goal here is to get these two trained up enough to be able to protect themselves so what would a fully trained yuzu and karin look like well, they could possibly both receive Zonpok Toes, which would be absolutely incredible, and they would learn to train with these Zonpok Toes. So very similar to Ichigo, Yuzu and Karin would go through training not only to master Shikai, but master Bonkai as well. Their brother was able to do it in two and a half days before his battle against Byakuya, and Byakuya was absolutely freaking out. He was like, do you have noble blood? Like, what is going on here? Anyways, I digress. Yuzu and Karin, they do have noble blood, so I think if exposed to the right amount of training and the right intensity of training they would be able to unlock like i said not only shikai but bonkai as well now a lot of you might be saying sterling like shikai and bonkai like do you really think those two girls are going to master it and what i say to that is they do have the potential to do it guys like i said minus the hollow they have the same potential that their brother ichigo did and like i said if the right threat like hell were to come along and like i said their nephew is going to be highly involved we're not quite sure how but they're going to be motivated to get stronger not only to protect themselves but now they have things to protect so guys the answer is yes they could get this strong this strong and this is a hypothetical anyways so we're gonna max these two out obviously to explore their max potential so after they've trained to master bonkai or shikai and bonkai with some of the strongest shinigami to ever exist in uahara ichigo in Ishin, they now move on to their training with uriyu where they can master not only the technique for quincy high speed movement but you but learn to master a Quincy bow and utilize all the techniques that we saw Uri you utilize. So once they're both trained up, guys, this, this potent mixture is insane. Now, guys, at this point, I'm not saying they're end of series Ichigo level by any means. But with significant training, these two are trained up and they're about as strong as Ichigo was when he was in the Soul Society. Now, they don't have the hollow, which was helping to power Ichigo slightly, but they do have something that Ichigo didn't have in the Soul Society arc. They have access to Quincy training, and they know how to use their Quincy powers as well as their Shinigami powers. So as far as training goes and knowing like how their powers actually work, they're far more ahead than Ichigo would have been. Now, this is where our hypothetical discussion about these two get extremely fun. Because obviously the whole point of training them up and maxing them out to their max potential was to fight the crisis that is soon to be hell attacking the world of the living soul society. And like I said, maybe even Waco Mundo. But now they're ready. And this is how I think things are could happen in a future hell arc. Between these two, at least. You'd have Uahara, you know, after the training. You'd have Ishin there, and they'd be like, okay, guys, like, it's happening. What you train for is happening. There's certain points all over the world that are now acting as gateways to hell. 
Now, like I said, this is completely hypothetical, but for story's sake, this is me speculating on how the hell art could go. So you've got Uehara there, and he's like, okay, guys, locations all over the earth, similar to Kurakura Town, are acting as open gates to hell. And there's combatants flowing from those gates. And so Soul Society would send captain level, their captain level Shinigami and the rest of their fighting force and the lieutenant and the rest of the court guard, they would send certain units to each one of the gates to combat hell coming out, obviously. Now, I don't think Yuzu and Karin are going to be sent straight to the front lines of battle. I think at some point something's going to go wrong and either their brother or their nephew is going to be in dire straits. Who knows, maybe even Toshiro, if <laughs> him and Karin have some sort of friendship at this point. But regardless, they're not going to be on the front line. Something's going to happen where they're forced to have to go and check out these said gateways to hell where these battles are happening. And guys, this is where things get extremely exciting because these two characters are forced to go through some extreme character development because now they're going to be fighting their own battles with actual foes that mean to take them down. And guys, I would love to see... This is one of the what-if animations that I would love to create or at least maybe a what-if manga because we have no idea when Kubo's going to continue the hell story. But that's why it's so much fun speculating on what it could look like and that's why this series is going to be a ton of fun because obviously today it was Yuzu and Karin but tomorrow it could be someone else and we could flesh out a different part of the hell arc with them but obviously right now in Yuzu and Karin's hypothetical they're now having to save the day just like their brother did on past occasions so they're going to either save Ichigo or rescue their nephew or Kazui, whatever they need to do, they have some sort of stake in the game now, and they're going to go battle the occupants of hell. Wouldn't it be incredible to see Yuzu and Karin with Zompok Toes battling the creatures that are crawling out of hell? Not only that, but at some point they'd be making their way through these gateways, and they'd run into, like, say, one of the ex-female original Gote 13 captains, and they'd have to work as a team using their new Shinigami and Quincy powers to take down some of the strongest ex-captains in existence that now may even be powered up by the powers of hell guys would you not love to see this animated like as a bleach fan this just gets me going because i could just see these two teenage girls fighting it out with ancient ancient hellish beings and it would be incredible to see I've always loved how Kubo's used, like, history and, like, the occult and religion to base some of his story around, just like with Yuha and the Quincy and what they represent and how occultic they are. I think he's going to draw some real-world inspiration from religious texts and, obviously, esoteric texts, and that's how he's going to base the lore of Hell off of. Like, obviously, we already know who's down there, but we don't know who's pulling the strings. We don't know their motives. We don't know if it's absolute carnage. But we, but what we do know is that, that this threat is going to be the biggest threat of all time. And like I said, it's going to take all hands on deck. So the future youth of the Bleach universe is going to need to be trained up. I mean, like I said, just imagine Yuzu and Karin, and they're making their way through this gateway fighting different enemies, getting stronger, exploring their powers even more, building a relationship with their Zompok Toe, like I said, mastering their Quincy abilities. These two have the potential, like if they go through many battles and go through progression throughout the Hell Arc, by the end of it, if the good guys win, Karin and Yuzu could come out on the other side, some of the strongest in the verse, right up there with the Gote 13 captains, easily. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that the Hell Arc is going to be based around Yuzu and Karin. I'm just saying that they should be trained up so then they can play a part in the, next, the upcoming story. I think that would be absolutely incredible.
I mean, just hear me out for a second. You've got Kazui and Ichika, and they're wanting to go and, like, help their parents on the battlefield because they're in dire straits, and they're like, all right, we've got to go help them. And then all of a sudden, Yuzu and Karin step out, and they're like, you're not going anywhere without your aunts. And, like, them and the other new characters become kind of like a ragtag crew that go in and try to, like, help save the day, like, help save the older characters, as in Ichigo and the captains from, like, the crazy battle that they're having with the occupants of hell. Anyways, like I said, I, I keep rambling on, but I think it would be absolutely incredible. Guys, tell me in the comments below, how do you think Yuzu and Karin could be involved in the hell arc? Do you agree with me? Do you think they should be trained up and help be some sort of fighting force against hell or do you see them playing no part i want to know down in the comments below guys i love talking bleach i love talking hypotheticals and i love speculating on characters and how they're going to play a role in the upcoming hell arc i think it's a blast and like i've said a hundred times i think yuzu and karin have the potential to be extremely strong they have potential to be extreme powerhouse not only as shinigami but as a quincy as well and a combination of the a combination of the two now, obviously, the scenario I just painted of Karin and Yuzu learning Shikai and learning Bonkai and mastering their Quincy abilities, that is an extreme scenario. That's pushing them to the limits, putting my controller in their backs and controlling their training and making them come out as strong as possible. But as far as the actual hell story that Kubo's going to play, they probably won't play that big of a part or a part at all. But like I said, that's what us YouTube are for. Now, how I actually see them, their role, like real realistically, I could see them still training and getting stronger. I could see Karin maybe mastering a Shikai at least, and maybe have Yuzu follow the Quincy route and maybe have her master a few Quincy abilities. I don't think they're going to get as strong as I hypothetically said, but I wanted to drive home the fact that they have the potential to. And until we see an actual Hell Arc from Kubo, all we can do is speculate. And I think it's extremely fun. Now, guys, I want to know down in the comments below, how strong do you think Yuzu and Karin could actually get? Give me an extreme highball and then give me a real realistic estimate estimate as well. I think it'd be extremely fun to discuss. Not just that, guys, but I'd love to discuss the future of Bleach as a whole. How do you think the Hell Arc is going to look? Do you think it'll look somewhat like I described, like an all-out battle, and then you'll have to have, like I said, some sort of ragtag group coming in behind made up of like newer characters? Guys, tell me in the comments below, because I'd love to pick your brain. It is my favorite part about making these videos. And it brings me a ton of joy, guys. So make sure we're staying interactive in the comments. I want to hear all your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, I wanted to share with you one of our goals. We are trying to bring these what ifs that we talk about on this channel to life. And what I mean by that is I have animators and voice actors on standby that are ready to start creating these bleach what ifs. Guys, I think it would be absolutely incredible. And I have so many great ideas in mind. Many of those coming from you guys. Like I said, can you just imagine some sort of like uh, fan animation made by us, made by Anime Bar Studios, exploring the Hell Arc that would at least hold us off until Kubo can actually give us the actual story. But how incredible would it see would it be to see some of our favorite characters that got zero shine in the actual Bleach story getting some shine in these future Bleach What If animations? I think it'd be absolutely incredible, guys. What you can do to help support these animations being created is smash that like button smash that subscribe button and share all these what ifs on this channel with all your friends because like i always said this isn't really my channel it's our channel and we can grow it up to the point where we are having full-blown animations with voice actors of all these incredible what-if stories. I cannot wait until that day. Guys, until then, stay tuned until the next video. And this is Sterling signing out. Have a great day.